find that the persons who are making the accusations, they're really the ones who have a problem. I hear them telling you to shut up, that you're going to be embarrassed, and I even hear them flat out saying, I'm telling you what to do as a pastor. Give me a chance and I'll give you what does the Bible say. Always ask for, what does the Bible say? The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, What Does the Bible Say? A Word from the Lord. All of our, I guess, joint broadcasts combined this evening. We are involved in the tent meeting, and so we've been on the air with different individuals each night. <clears throat> Johnny's been on one night. Brant's been on some nights. We've been on together various uh, and a sundry mixtures and, uh, I guess, combinations of individuals trying to bring you the the good news, the gospel of Christ that can save your souls. And if you haven't been out to the tent, you've got one night left. If you're watching this program, in a way I want to say shame on you, you should have been out to the tent. But if you weren't able to go, I appreciate you watching. Glad you are here with us. And if you uh, haven't yet been out to the tent, please, please come. You've got one night left. That $50 gas card, my understanding, has not been taken. And so if you um, would like $50 worth of free gas, Bring your pastor, bishop, rabbi, whatever, uh, out to the tent. Get him or her to ask a question, Bible question, and that gas card will be yours. And so we hope that you will take advantage of that. We've been talking to individuals, knocking on doors, telling them about it. They seem real impressed. I'm going to tell my pastor. I'm going to tell my pastor. But I don't know if they uh, are really going to get the reaction that they want to out of it. They like the idea of their pastor going so they can get gas. But I suspect, friends, that if you tell your pastor, bishop, rabbi, or, or Sunday school teacher that you want them to go out to the gospel tent and hear the, uh, hear the preaching or ask a question during the question and answer session a, in order for you to get that gas card, you uh, are going to be in for a sad, sad disappointment, I do believe. So, <clears throat> but we still want you to come out. You'll find all sorts of information being give, given there. Uh, uh, Brant Stubblefield is preaching tonight. It's his last night to be there. Brother Johnny Robertson will be preaching tomorrow night. And um, we'll be on the air again tomorrow night at 8.30, 8.30 to 10 o'clock. So we hope you will, if you can't come out to the tent, continue to watch the program. If you'd like a copy of all the programs that we've been doing during the tent meeting, and if you would like a set of all the lessons that have been given under the tent, during this 12-day uh, uh, event, all you have to do is let us know and we'll get a copy to you. That's just the way the Church of Christ is. We believe the gospel is free. We want to give it to you. We want to help you in any way we can to study the Bible. So all you have to do is ask us. But July 3rd, tomorrow night, last night, and uh, if, you, uh, if you haven't made a chance to or haven't had a chance to get out there, please do so tomorrow night and hope to see you there. We want you to remember, friends, that we are trying to bring you the gospel. And here's where you can find it, 335 Mount Cross Road, uh, right next to Leggett's Town and Country in the parking lot, the CarQuest Auto Parts uh, uh, parking lot, right across from the mall. Everybody knows where it is. Come on out to the, to the tent. Tonight, friends, I want to continue a theme that really we've been going through all uh, the, two, the two weeks or all through the, uh, the tent meeting effort. <clears throat> we are trying to get you to see and to view us, the Church of Christ, members of the Church of Christ, as mythbusters. And we're wanting you to realize that really the world is a better place because we're in it. Now, some of you might, might say that the world would be a better place without the Church of Christ. If I were to ask you that, you might say, yes, we've been passing out flyers. One of the flyers that we have been passing out says, ask the question. Fact or fiction, would the, church, would the world be a better place without the Church of Christ? And you may be saying, yes, it would be. But I submit to you that if you will simply examine what the Church of Christ can do for the community, yea, for the world, I think you'll change your mind. If you will openly and objectively examine what we are doing and what we're saying, I think you'll see that the world will be a better place. And I'm going to show you a situation tonight that hopefully will help you see that. We are trying very desperately and hard to, to uh, 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 remove myths that actually hinder people.
Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2 that uh, after, after a period of time, people will be turned unto fables. They will turn away from the truth and be turned unto fables. That's actually 2 Timothy 4 and verse 2. They'll be turned into fables. We don't want you to be turned into fables, which is actually the word for myth or fiction. We don't want you to believe a lie. We want you to believe a truth. Now, you may be saying, well, I think the world would be a better place if you weren't here. And if so, you might agree with some of these people. Listen to what some people have said about the church of Christ because they don't understand what we are trying to do or what we're all about. Here's what they say. Hey. I belong to a Baptist church. You're wrong. Uh, uh, yeah, I know I'm wrong, Chip. <laughs> but uh, this soon uh, it, it get a little bit colder. Yeah. If I believe Johnny Roberts, I'll take every Bible I got in the house and go down there and start a fire with it. If I believe what that, that he preaches, I would. I'll take every Bible I got and go down there and start a fire with every one of them and never hit, hit another church door in my life that I believe what that thing preaches. And you are a money-grubbing, lying hypocrite. How do you think? Tell me why she get on there and, and uh, he get on there and he's got an attitude problem. You know, uh, a preacher don't have an attitude problem like that thing guy. I mean, I'm sound and all. I mean, he, I mean, I have got hot with him, you yeah. know. What, what is it about Johnny that does this to you? Uh, oh, shut up. Johnny Robert, that man, is if a blind is leading it blind, he's 75, is going to fall in hell with him. Smugly, superior. Is anybody in your rotten church ever matched Mother Teresa? If I ever catch one of my kids in your church, I'll stomp a mud hole in them so deep, they'll never be able to get up and walk out. Get saved. That's a bunch of hogwash. I mean, you, you sound like you go ahead and scream, get, get it out of it. What, what does he do to you? He does. He explains the Bible the way he wants it. All right. That thing sitting inside of you ain't nothing but a hypocrite. He's going to bust hell wide open. Mm. Ma'am, have you been watching our program all night? Yeah, I have. And getting mad at the minute. Yeah, before you get that dog. Just only the um, church of Christ is going to heaven. Well, I get it. It is Christian people in all churches. God is not going to just pick one church. Well, I, he, I feel sorry for you. Well, he, I don't know where you're getting that junk from. I, you're not reading out of the Bible like we, like we do. Well, Why is he going around teaching this and teaching that when he better be teaching his own self how to go to heaven? Okay, well, fine. Now it's your turn to answer our question. Are you in a Baptist church? I'm in a Baptist church, That's what and you I and your fat boy are both on your way to hell. That's where y'all live. Oh. Yeah, you a fat boy. I, I, didn't thought, I you. thought you didn't. I thought you wanted to judge. Thank you judge. very much. Do so you believe in judging? I don't judge you. Well, I you hate just, you. You just you hate me. Did you say that again? I said I hate you. Thank you. And you is that the preachers are not afraid of you. Now, you are challenging the preachers, but let me say to you, you the preachers know that you are not you call him a coward, but you're being a coward. If I could meet him face to face, I'd show him what a coward was. What'd you do to him? I'd beat his head in. <laughs> How do you feel inside about Johnny Robinson? I despise him. Look here. But you know what I think? Is this scripture? Is this scripture? Yeah, well, all you like is a horn. Oh. I think he is too faced. I think he's building an occult church. You're a heathen bastard who spends most of your time teaching the devil's religion. Sir, is it all? Oh, shut up. If I show you in the And back. also, you are not supposed to talk about the Holy Ghost. If you don't know nothing about it, you should just keep your mouth shut about it. Ma'am, I, I feel sorry can for you, y'all. Can you let me talk now? I heard that to get well, you, you shouldn't. You shouldn't be all the air. You are just impossible to talk to. Thank all right, thank you. Now, what you're doing is segregating. You're saying, yada, yada, yada. This... This is my religion is the only one right. So what does the Bible say? Yes, why didn't you go with Johnny? All right, now, listen. All these people were really filled with hatred, and I think they would all agree that the world would be a better place without us. We're segregating people. We're dividing people. I hate you. I'd beat your head in. You know, heathen and, and, and uh, using vulgar and, and curse words, all kinds of stuff. But, friends, I think... The problem is these individuals that are expressing these uh, uh, feelings, these sentiments, don't really realize the benefit that the church of Christ can actually have on a community. And that's really what this whole tent meeting has been about, trying to get you to see 
that we can actually be a, a force for good if you wouldn't despise us so much. If you just stop, back up, Take a deep breath, calm down, and really look at what we're trying to do. Now, and uh, all we want is a fair shake. We just want a fair shake for you to uh, examine what we're teaching and then realize we would actually make the world a better place. Now, I want you to consider what the world would really be like if we could simply get individuals to reason from the scriptures about what the Lord said. You know, if you would just stop and consider, I think you'll find that we are really the ones who are trying to help people get along. We are really the individuals who are trying to get people to work together, live together in harmony, to put away the animosity and the hatred that they may have one toward another, to put away all the bickering, the differences that arise when people fail to follow the Bible, and just really stop and consider that, you know what, maybe there is some truth to what these folks in the Church of Christ are trying to tell us when it comes to living a good and wholesome and morally upright life. Would you really stop? Would you really please consider what we're trying to do? We're trying to help people get along. Here's why I say this. We, friends, are the only ones, really, who are trying to help the community come together by breaking down all the walls and barriers of racism. He said, that's not true, James. You aren't the only ones. I'm telling you what, friends. We are trying to give the community the only thing that can break down the barriers of racism, and that's the Bible. And you say, well, I, I go to church all the time. The church I'm in is not racist. The church I'm in is not, is not full of bigots. The church I'm in does not have animosity toward people of different races or, or colors. I submit to you, friends, that if you're not following the Bible in its totality, if you're not following the Bible and you're not doing things in Bible ways and calling Bible things in Bible names, that you're actually contributing to the, to the uh, breakdown or, or of, of racial relations, good, open racial relations. And you say, well, I don't, think that's the problem. I don't think that's the case. Well, let me just show you. Here's what happens when people don't follow God's Word. Here's what happens when people stop doing what we're saying all people ought to do. And let's just see what happens when, when people fail to follow the Bible. And that's what we're trying to get them back to doing. Notice this. You start sowing things that you soon will wish you never have sown. When people get away from the Bible, people will actually start teaching and advocating and promoting things that are not true. And then the masses will start uh, uh, believing it and they'll start reproducing it. They'll start emulating it. They'll start teaching it and, and espousing it. And pretty soon the divide between individuals of different race are actually wider than you really want them to do. And it's because of things like this. Notice this. Here is Charles Darwin. Now Charles Darwin is definitely something, someone that has sown something that the United States of America is reaping. And it's not a pretty crop. You know, it's, it's not a pretty crop. It's not roses and flowers and everything. It's weeds. It's garbage, friends. What Charles Darwin is sowing is really seeds of the devil. It's not of God. Here's what he says. He said, at some future period, not very distant as measured by centuries, the civilized races of man, not this is my emphasis, but the civilized races of man will almost certainly exterminate and replace the savage races throughout the world. Now stop and think about that. That sounds like genocide to me. That sounds like removing an entire population or getting rid of an entire population that is lesser than the uh, other population. In other words, there are some class of people, some race of, of man are above other races of men. Now, we, we recognize when guys like Adolf Hitler would say that, oh, that's bad, that's bad, that's bad. But when Charles Darwin says it, oh, well, he's a scientist. He is a, he's a great mind. He's a great thinker. 
But notice this. He says over a period of time, civilized race of man will exterminate and replace savage races. Now, would you please elaborate and tell us, Mr. Darwin, what savage races are? What are the races that, that should be exterminated? What are the races that will eventually uh, be replaced and exterminated? Well, here's what he says. Go on and read. He says at the same time, the anthropomorphous apes, that's those apes that turn into men, I guess, or they change, and simply put, as professor, as professor, professor whatever, whoever his name is, you, you just try to pronounce that, has remarked, will no doubt be exterminated. The break, watch it, the break between man and his nearest allies will then be wider for it will intervene between man in a more civilized state. Now watch this. He says, see, once we evolve, man will have a wider gap. There will be a wider bridge, you might say, between man and the animal kingdom or the apes. Here's what he says. He says, as we may hope, even than the Caucasian and some apes as low as the baboon. In other words, there's going to be a wider gap between the white man and the baboon. And uh, instead of as now, between the Negro or Australian and the gorilla. Now, did you hear what he said? He said, pretty soon there's going to be a broader gap between man and his nearest allies, nearest relative. See? In other words, the white man is pretty far away from the baboon instead of the closeness between the Negro and the gorilla. Now, that's what Charles Darwin said, not me. Now, let's see if we can put it together in maybe a picture that will help you see what Darwin is saying. What Darwin is saying is, <clears throat> after a period of time, races, there will be one race that will excel and another race that is closer to the apes and the gorillas. It will be exterminated. And then we'll have a wider gap <clears throat> rather than the close gap. What Darwin is actually saying is, is that the Negro or Australian, I'll use his terms, is actually the missing link. And that after a period of time, that missing link will be gone. Now, you can't, you can't, you can't deny what he's saying. He said over a period of time, the link between this animal and this man is going to be exterminated, or it's going to be wider. And this, this race will be exterminated. It'll be gone. Now, that's what Darwin said. Now, I don't, I don't see how anyone can turn around and say, well, this is going to promote racial unity. This is going to get rid of all this racial tension that we have between the whites and the blacks and the browns and the reds and the yellows. I say, friends, this, this will bring more racial tension because here is a man that is revered by some, praised by many, who is actually promoting, actually promoting a, a, a doctrine, if you will, a teaching, a doctrine similar to teaching, but actually promoting a doctrine that actually says when we evolve some more, one race of people will actually be gone. And yet that's taught in our schools. That's promoted in our, in our halls of higher learning. And no one is worried about it. But then they turn around and say, you know what? I wonder why we got so much racial tension. I wonder why there's so much animosity between people of different colors. Hmm. Let's think about it. Let, you think it has anything to do with the fact that we're teaching and promoting doctrines and teachings that actually say that one race ought to be exterminated if we're going to evolve? You see how bad that is? Now, you say, well, James, I don't think we're, we're reaping what we're sowing. I say we are. I say we're reaping exactly what we're sowing. We bought into this idea that one race is different from another, and instead of achieving the kind of unity that we want, where whites and blacks and reds and browns and yellows can all get along, and we all look at each other as individuals, not as as a, a person that is distinguished by certain characteristics of their skin, 
See, when we, when we start promoting things, we'll never get beyond the color of skin. When you start saying, well, that is a trait that one day will be exterminated. See, this is what we're shooting for, neighbors. This is what we're, we're striving for. We're striving for peace and harmony between people of different races because we know that ultimately that's what God wants. God wants individuals not to be looked at based upon what their skin looks like, but based upon what their inner man is looked like. You know, I, 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 uh, I wonder why it is that we don't promote, I mean, Martin Luther King Jr. is promoted for, for his civil rights uh, uh, agenda. And the man said, plain as day, I want to see the world in which his children are judged not by the color of skin, but by conduct of character. That's exactly what the Church of Christ has been saying all along or the church of the Bible, that's what we've been teaching. You judge a man by the content of his character, not by what color he is. But then we have Charles Darwin over here being promoted in our schools that actually says, well, you know, you can say you want to judge someone by the, by the content of their character, but I'm sorry to say, but one of these days, those individuals with a certain color of skin are going to be exterminated because they're closer to the gorilla. Now, is that promoting... Is that promoting something, friends? Is that, is that promoting something that you really want? And so I say we're reaping what we sow. We're reaping what you sow. You know, one of the issues in our society that is still coming up, it's always on the agenda, it's always on the horizon, is slavery. Now let me say this, neighbors. When we talk about our society, there are some things in our past that are in our past, and, you know, I can't change the past. I can't change the past, but I can sure do what I can to change the future. Recently, I read in the final call, and, and uh, when we're going to be discussing some of these things later on, we're going to the phone lines, let you see what you think. But in the final call, which is the paper put out by the Nation of Islam, there was an article in there. I didn't, I didn't get to read it all. But it actually states that a, what's the headline say? Slavery Apology Resolution Passes U.S. Senate. You know what? The U.S. Senate passes an apology for slavery ever so often. Now, I don't know how many times you need to apologize for something. You can't change the past. But what we can do is we can realize that God has a healing resolution right here that will bring whites and blacks and browns and reds and yellows all together in a common bond where men are looked at not by what they are on the outside, but what kind of person they are on the inside. Now, let's talk about, let's talk about slavery. You know, the Bible talks about slavery. Now, the Bible does indicate there are some instances where individuals may be, they may be uh, uh, enslaved, you might say, or they may be uh, held against their will or maybe not given the freedoms that they want because of certain situations. They may become indentured servants. Maybe they had a debt, and so they put themselves into slavery. But there is a term in the Bible that condemns a great majority of slavery. Look at this. It's called men-stealing. Men-stealing is the result of one man looking at another man and saying, you're not as good of a person as I am. I don't look at you and consider you as an equal. I look at you and consider you as a lesser person. Now that is actually what the Bible is talking about when it talks about men stealers. In 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 10, let me see if I get my Bible program up here. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Verse 10, look what, God, what, what is condemned here. Whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, there's the homosexuals, for men stealers. Now, men stealers are those individuals that actually put a person or, or hold a person against their will. They... Uh, enslave them, I think it's the word, the word is actually uh, uh, enslave, enslaving, an enslaver as bringing men to his feet, a men stealer. That's what, that's what kind of individuals that, that uh, the Bible is condemning. And so we're trying to get you to see that, you know what, 
we're trying to uh, put an end to this kind of feeling. Now watch this. Look what Paul will say. Uh, men stealers are condemned. Here's an example. In Genesis 37 and verse 27. Genesis 37, 27. Now, anybody who knows the story of Joseph knows that it was men stealing that actually caused Joseph to be sold into uh, uh, Egyptian bondage. This is what they said. Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. This is what his brethren are saying. By the way, I think his brethren were the same color as Joseph was, weren't they? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brethren were content. His brethren were content. Let's sell him. He's our, he's our blood. He's our flesh. They didn't have a problem with it. But look what, look what the Bible went on to say. In Genesis 40, in Genesis 40 and verse 15, uh, here's what Joseph says, For indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews, and here also have I done nothing that they should put me in, in, uh, in the dungeon. Stolen away out of the land. That's what we're talking about. And that's, that, was the, um, that was what was the cause of American slavery. Individuals stolen from their homeland, taken to another land, all because other men. It wasn't white men that, was, that, were, that were selling slaves. It wasn't just white men. It was black men selling black men, white men buying them, you see, it wasn't a racial thing. It was all because these individuals didn't care about someone else. That's what the product is. American slavery was the product of men stealing. It was people oftentimes of the same color selling men into slavery. You see what I'm talking about? When you get away from the Bible, one man does not look the same as another man. The Bible will teach, will teach men not to mistreat those who are less. Not to mistreat those who are weak or who are smaller. Not to take advantage of someone just because you are the stronger person. But when you get away from the Bible and you stop adhering to Bible principles, man, anything goes. If I can dominate you, I'll do with you what I want to. That's what this says. And so now we have American slavery. Because people were selling, stealing men for personal gain. Now let's look at this. Let's look at the domino effect. And this is really what I want to get to, friend. I'm trying to show you the domino effect of American slavery, of men stealing, where individuals, white, black, red, yellow, brown, blue, green, with pink, pink with purple, purple dogs, when you, when you look at someone else and say, you are lesser than I am because of your skin color or because of just where you're from. You're not of the same tribe as I am. You're not of the same state as I am. You're not of the same country as I am. You're not of the same region as I am. You, do, you think, do you think that the, the Native American Indians looked at each other and said, oh, wait, we're, we're kind of the same color? You think the Apaches and the Comanches and the Blackfoot and the Sioux, you think they all looked at each other? Well, we got to get along because we're the same color. Man, they fought with each other. They stole each other. See, it's not a, it's not a racial thing. It, it can come down to a regional thing. That's why gangs fight other gangs, not just because of the color of the skin, but because you're on my territory. You are, see, you're lesser than I am. We're tougher. We're bigger. We're better. Now, here's the product of American slavery, men stealing. Here's what happens. When people look at someone else as being lesser, you don't treat them the same way. You don't treat them the same way. You're, you're subhuman. We saw that with, with Charles Darwin, didn't we? Charles Darwin basically said that races of people, like the black race of people, were subhuman. So they're not highly involved as as the, white, as the Caucasian man. Now here's what happens. When you look at someone and say, well, <clears throat> you're lower 
you are lower standing upon the uh, on in the scale of men than than everybody else. So we're not going to treat you the same. Well, you know what happens? You know what happens? You don't care about them as a soul, as a living soul. Oftentimes, animals were treated better than than slaves. Why? Because the animals were viewed as having more worth. Well, do you think that for the most part, and I'm sure there's some uh, some uh, ex exceptions to a lot of these rules, but do you think that people who owned slaves and looked at slaves as simply property took the time to teach them the gospel? Do you think they took the time to teach them God's word? Oftentimes, some of these slave owners might have been going to church. But were they listening? See, I say the same problem we had back then is the same problem today. A lot of people, well, I go to church. Are you listening to the word? Are you even getting the word, you see? Are you listening to what the Bible says? Now, when you don't teach people the gospel and you treat them like property, look what happens. You break up the home, right? You divide family. Daddy's sold over here. Mama's going over here. Children are going over here. No family cohesion. No family unity. No family uh, 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 constant. It's all disruption. And that becomes the norm. We don't know. We, you know, we haven't been taught by our fathers. We haven't been taught by our mothers how to be good mothers and good, good wives. We haven't been taught by our husbands and fathers how to be good husbands and, and fathers on down the line. See, it hasn't been reciprocated. Paul said in Titus, I believe it's Titus chapter 2, look at this. Here's what he said. He says, Speak the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, Grave, temperate, sound in faith, and charity and patience. The aged women likewise, that they be, be that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not giving them much wine. Teachers, whoops, I missed it. Teachers of good things, verse 4, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Young men likewise, exhort to be sober-minded in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may, put, may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say, to say of you. Now, here's my point. When you disrupt the family and you don't allow the... Number one, you're not, you're not teaching the older and the younger women how and the older and younger men, how are you going to then pass these things on down when you're looking at them as simply property? And so pretty soon this becomes the norm. This becomes the norm. And then we have a society, we have a society that looks up at the family as, that's a, that's a strange thing. You mean there's a whole family? You mean there's a whole mom and daddy living together and their children are actually together under one roof? And so generation after generation suffers because the gospel and God's plan for the family hasn't been taught. It hasn't been taught. You see, this idea of Matthew 19, Matthew 19 hasn't been instilled in individuals. If you don't care enough about them to teach them, you're not going to teach them this, that God said that this is, uh, that this is God's law for marriage. Have you not read, he, that made, he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they twain shall be one flesh? Wherefore they are no more twain but one flesh. What well, therefore God has joined together, let all men put us under. Now do you think that that's going to be taught to generation after generation if at first you don't care enough about these individuals? Because you're simply looking at them as property and they are, they are objects to be stolen. And I'm saying to you, friends and neighbors, this is the consequences. And that's why when the white man of America engaged in men stealing and looked at the black man as property and didn't take the time to teach the gospel, to these individuals. Now, on down through time, we have a whole society that is so far removed from what God said all about the family that society suffers. You say, well, James, are you, are you saying that the, that the black community 
has more problems than the white community? Friends, I'm saying statistics prove that the black community has a lot more unwed mothers and a lot more children born out of wedlock and a lot more marriage and divorce or individuals who aren't even married at all than the white community. And I'm saying here's why. Because way on back there, men got away from the Bible and started looking at other men as objects instead of people. Now, we're trying to stop that. We're trying to stem the tide. We're trying to get the white man to look at the black man like this is, this is your fellow man. And we're trying to get the black man to look at the white man and say, look, you know, a lot of bad has been done in the past, but we can, we can change it. It doesn't have to keep going on. You see, we're trying to say we can make the world a better place. Now, let me, let me just say this here. I realize we're reaping what we sow. You know, a culture, a nation that, that fails to instill God's principles in generation after generation will soon realize that, you know what, you're in a world of mess. You're in a world of hurt. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to prove that all men can and should be treated equally in order to stop all the results that come from a sinful action. You see, you see what men stealing did? It didn't just it didn't just hurt generation after generation when it comes to God's plan for the family. All it did is incite animosity between two races. See? It incited division. And it caused individuals to look at one another and say, that person doesn't like me because of well, my skin color. It causes, it causes it to be that when you walk down the street and you see somebody the other color, some, this one little thought runs in your mind and says, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? You see, that's, that's the product of it. And so we're trying to put a stop to that. See, when we were out knocking doors, neighbor, we, we, knocked, we passed out 15,000 flyers every day, 15,168 to be exact. We didn't, we didn't just go to the white folks. We didn't just go to the black folks. We went to folks. See? We said everybody that, that we meet, we're going to give a flyer to. And let me tell you, we went to some very, very poor parts of town, and we went to some really, really rich parts of town. We were in some parts of town, friends, but the house, the house would take up one block. And other times we were in places where one block was nothing but houses of people living above and below one another, side by side one another. You see, why? Because we know that we have something that can stem the tide of sinful practice. Now, you may say, well, James, I, uh, I, I just don't believe, I just don't believe that, that uh, everybody feels the same as you do. I do, friends. I'm going to say this. When you don't go back to the Bible, it will only result in more racial division, not less. Not less. Do you realize that when we condemn Charles Darwin for what he said about the black man, do you know that because a lack of Bible knowledge, the black man will actually say the same thing about the white man? That's true. Look, if you listen to what Charles Darwin said and if it appalled you, if you're a member of the black community and you say, you know what, I just can't believe Charles Darwin said that, would you please take a listen or look at what someone said about the white man? Now, here's Louis Farrakhan, leader of the Nation of Islam. He said, white people are potential humans. They haven't evolved yet. Now, you know what? Charles Darwin scares me. So does Louis Farrakhan. Because both are statements about an extreme that are just not true. The white man is not subhuman, and the black man is not subhuman. See? 
the white man is no more superior to the black man than the black man is superior to the white man. The Bible says that God created all out of one blood, Acts 17 and verse 26. He has made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell upon the face of the earth. God's no respect of a person, Acts 10 34. And we're trying to get back to the Bible to help people see. You know what? You need, you need to be looking past the color. And if you have a problem with, if you have a problem with race, then you have a problem with the Bible. See? In the Lord's church, in every congregation of the Lord's church that brings you a word from the Lord of what does the Bible say? Sitting side by side on Sunday morning are individuals from the black community and the white community. White and black sitting side by side. Serving together. Worshiping together. Why? Because of the word of God. The unity that it brings. See? That's what we're talking about. It brings unity, not disunity. Now, I want you to realize, friends, we are concerned about unity. And my question to you is, do you think, do you think that churches of men who have shown that they don't care about the Bible simply because they exist, do you really think they're concerned about God's Word? Do you think they're going to promote unity between the races, or do you think they're going to actually promote division and segregation? See, I know this is a problem. I know, I know racial segregation is a problem, but we're trying to bring it all together. We're trying to bring it together where individuals of all different races can come together because that's what the Bible says the Lord's church ought to be like. Look at this. Isaiah chapter 2. Listen to what he says. It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and he shall judge the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords and plowshares and their spears into uh, pruning hooks. Look at this. All nations? All nations? That's exactly what he said. All nations, everybody is going to come to the house of God. All nations will flow into it. Why? Because that's the nature of the kingdom. Matt, we want to run our commercial, and then we're going to come back with, with uh, Brother Mark in, in, in just a moment. Let him get ready. But we're going to be discussing this, friends, and we're going to open the phone lines. When we come back, we're going to open the phone lines. And then I would like to hear what you have to say about the churches of men and their role in bringing racial unity or do they actually promote disunity? We've been accused of, of making divisions. We've been confused of, of, of segregating. We've been, confused, we've been uh, accused of causing all kinds of division and hatred and animosity. Not so, friends, not so. But I want to hear what you think. We're going to run a commercial. Be right back. Brother Mark McMinnis is going to join me, and we're going to take your phone calls. What if I say I won't give you a knuckle? A knuckle sandwich. Times are hard, and pastors are getting angry and damble. Whether you believe the way I believe or not, I don't care. Videotape me. I run the devil out of our church, so get out. Don't come on this property again. Understand me. All right, well, as I, leave, right. as I leave, I hope you read 2 Timothy 2.24. I hope you read too, son. You worry about your own problems. You get out of our business. There is no better business bureau in religion. The Church of Christ, then, is your best bet. We're at the tent, 7 p.m. each night, June 22nd through July the 3rd, across from the mall in Danville on Mount Cross, right next to... I couldn't stay in Johnny at first. I thought he was a nut. And once I read the Bible for myself, I'm able to accept the truth now. All right. And it doesn't make me angry. I'm talking about the Lauren Hardy show on Wednesday. Don't worry about them, some y'all. Get off of it, would you? Don't dare do that again. Shut that up. Shut that up. Shut that up. As your pastor, I am telling you, please. Don't waste your time on Wednesday nights watching this television program. If you're looking for Laurel and Hardy, 
I left my derby and I left my cane, but I did bring my Bible. If you'll read along with me, you'll find that the persons who are making the accusations, they're really the ones who have a problem. I hear them telling you to shut up, that you're going to be embarrassed, and I even hear them flat out saying, I'm telling you what to do as a pastor. Give me a chance and I'll give you what does the Bible say. Always ask for, what does the Bible say? All right, welcome back. Here with Mark McMinnis. Mark, thanks for coming on. We're, uh, we're discussing the, uh, uh, the fact that you know, our community is so racially divided and we are actually trying to give people the gospel that can actually bring unity. That's correct. Um, and Mark is a member of the church at, that meets in, uh, at 120 American Legion Boulevard. And uh, he does some of the preaching over there, sharing those duties. And, uh, and uh, you know, as we said earlier, Mark, every, every congregation of the Lord's people in this area, you know, we, we don't have any, any uh, uh, segregation among us. Uh, there's a number of individuals in the, in the uh, uh, church at uh, uh, Danville, Martinsville, and uh, Eden, where we are. All work are, together. They all, we all work together. Eat together. Eat together. <laughs> I mean, Commune, we, we uh, joke fellowship. together. We, right. you, know, you know, I, I tell you, just uh, there's one brother in particular that I just, uh, uh, if he were to, if he didn't joke with me, I think he, I think he, I think he have a problem. Got to be talking about you know, Eugene. That's Eugene. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, you know, I just uh, and uh, and all these brethren, you know, we just get along so well because we have one common. Uh, love and that's the truth. And so uh, <clears throat> we're going to open the phone lines, and I'd like to let people know, uh, see what people think. But as we're waiting on that, I want you to notice this, Mark. You know, we're talking about the role that the church has in promoting unity. Now, this is an uh, 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 article, and I, I ran a little bit of this the other night. But this is an article that actually uh, ran the Daniel Rest B about Bible Way Cathedral. Uh, and uh, uh, Lawrence G. Campbell is the uh, uh, chief apostle over there. And we're going to make some comments about that. We're, we'll go ahead and take that call if you let it through. <coughs> you on the air? Hey, Brother James. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Brother James, I was blinded just about all my life. And I will be 50 years old in November. But I would like uh, some literature and DVDs. Okay. And uh, my name... In, anything in particular? Huh? Anything in particular that you would like? The whole Bible. I'm, I'm talking about in, on DVD. Uh, up here recent because I've been watching Johnny. Okay, but I'm talking about you, you would like some DVDs. Any particular show? Just anything we have? Tent meeting? Yes, sir. Um, I was uh, supposed to believe in that you get saved, but nothing was mentioned about baptism. Okay. And I would like to know more about that. Okay. Well, while you're on the line, let me just tell you some, and then I'll put you on hold, and we'll get a name, uh, phone number, contact information, whatever, and we'll get some DVDs and some literature out to you. Thank you okay. so much. And I'd like to go to the tent meeting tomorrow night. All right. Where, where are you? Uh, Reedsville. You're in Reedsville. Okay. Uh, when we get your contact information from you, we'll... Work out a ride for you. Thank you so much, okay. James. Now, let me ask you this. What was your first name? Robin. Robin. You know, Robin, you asked about uh, salvation, and uh, you said, I think you said what you were taught, that you just had to believe. Yes, sir. And then saved. But let's, can we just go through what the Bible says quickly? Yes, sir. Uh, here's what the Bible says. The Bible never says faith only. Now, a lot of times when people read when they hear the word believe in the Bible, they immediately assume uh, uh, faith only. But uh, that's just not the case. Let's see. Uh, whoops. I did a bad thing there. Uh, let me just go right here. All right. Let me just, let me just look here. In uh, Math, uh, Mark, Mark 16, in verse 16. Notice what Jesus says. He says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Now, belief is certainly important. We would never deny that. But notice what Jesus connects with it. He puts baptism with it. 
Now, there are a lot of other things that aren't mentioned in this verse that we know are connected to salvation. And so what we're, what we're trying to get people to see is the Bible teaches that he that believeth the first step on the road to salvation and is baptized the last step on the road to salvation must be done. Now, if I tell you, Robin, if I tell you the first step in a process and the last step in a process, do you, uh, do you then think that there are no steps in between? For example, if I tell you to bake a cake, you have to break some eggs. That's the first step. And the last step is ice the cake. Put the icing on. Are you going to just break some eggs and try to put icing on those eggs? No. You're going to do all the steps in between, right? That's correct. You know you have to mix the batter, pour it in a pan, put it in the oven, bake it for X number of time, take it out, let it cool, then ice it. But if I just told you, well, bake the cake and then ice it, I'm simply telling you the first and last step. That's what Jesus does. That's See, right. He never says believe only. He says believe and be baptized. If, you're, if you believe not, you'll be damned. Why? Because you won't have done anything else that he says. He says... Uh, that your person must repent. Luke 13, 3. Right? Luke 13, 3. Jesus said, repent. Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Now that's got to be in there somewhere. It's got to be somewhere in Matthew 16, 16. We, gotta, we can't leave it out. And then he also says, you must confess. You must confess. Acts uh, 8 and verse 30. Oops, should be 36. And they said, went on their way, they came to a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest all thine heart, thou mayest. And he said, I, and he answered and said, This is the eunuch, answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So you had to confess Christ, and then they went down to the water and were baptized. So, you know, that's a kind of a, a very quick, abbreviated uh, answer. To, about the salvation question. I want to be baptized. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's, I'm going to put you on the, on, the, on the line, on the hold, and let's get some information from you, and we'll, we'll get right with you. I enjoy you, and I've learned a whole lot. Okay. Well, I appreciate you watching. And uh, we'll get back. We'll get in touch with you. I'm talking about tonight. You know? Okay. We'll put you on hold. The gentleman will talk to you. He may ask you some few questions. He may get some more information from you. Find out something about you, but we will certainly, we will certainly not delay. Thank you. All right. That's a good call. That's line, that's line three. So what do you think about that, Mark? Well, I think that's great. And, and uh, I know Brother Brant touched on this the other night about uh, Matthew 19 and verse 6. You know, it says, and, and of course he's talking about marriage there. But it says, whatsoever therefore that God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. And as you had up there a while ago, Mark 16, 16, God joined belief and baptism. And is a conjunction. It joins those two things together. So, right. and, and man has been trying to, to put it asunder ever since. Sure had. Yeah. Sure had. All right, we've got another line. You on the air? Yes. I am just so pleased that finally someone is preaching that we're all equal. All right. And that you can go to one church and serve one God. Can, can you turn your, TV, turn your TV down, please? Is that better? Turn, that's better. To serve one God. And I know that you're correct with the Bible because the Bible doesn't divide us into different races. That's it right. says we are his people. That's mm -hmm. right. And thank you very no, much. All right. Can, 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 we let, can we talk a little bit? Can sure. we ask you what, uh, what church do you belong to? Uh, right now, I don't belong to any church because okay. I've had a problem with going to the churches in the area because it's you either got to go to a black church or a white church. Right. Also, And people um, teaching two different things. And I'm a person that believes that the Bible, what the Bible says. Right. And so right now, I, and I did belong to a church in the area, but because of the way I feel, I felt I had to leave. You know what, ma'am? There's... Um there's Jim when we mentioned just earlier, uh, Eugene, brother Eugene. He uh, he he's actually been on the program I think with Johnny before. Did did some uh, 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 show with him or whatever. 
And uh, he's told me this story a number of times, and I don't think he'll mind me repeating it, but he, he was watching on TV, watching Johnny on TV, and, and he said he told his wife, he said, well, they were talking about getting back, going back to church. And he said, well, there's one church I want to try. And he said, I don't know what it's going to be like. He said, but it's going to be a, it, it's, it's a white church. I, w- I want to go. And so they went. And you know what they found? They found that there was a lot of people, you know, uh, black, black people, black friends, co-workers that he used to work with that were right there. You know, and it, I think it was sort of a pleasant surprise. You know what? Hey, it's, you know, it's not really about race in the Church of Christ. It's all about, you know, the truth. And uh, I just, uh, I think if you will assemble with uh, a Church of Christ in, in Eden or Reedsville or, Dan, or, or I mean, uh, uh, Danville or Martinsville, I think you will, I think you'll have the same pleasant uh, experience, you know, because you'll find, you know what, it's, it's not about, it's not about color. Exactly. Where, where, where are you? Are you in Dan, Martinsville, Danville? No, I'm located in Eden. In Eden, Okay. Well, we're on 250 Boulevard, and we would love to have you visit with us. Okay, I'll do that. And uh, we meet Sundays at 10 o'clock. Okay. And uh, I, I just, I'd love to, I'd love to meet you in person. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you. That was a good call. That was a good call. <laughs> was a good call. You know, I, I just, and that's what we're trying to do, Mark. I'm I love to, it when we get good calls. I know, <laughs> I know. People, people aren't, aren't uh, you know, you, you can actually let your shield down a little yeah. bit, you know, your guard down, but. You know, I, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get people to see, you know what, we're really not the, the stereotypical, if I use that word, the stereotypical, mm-hmm. you know, church. You know, we're not the white church over here that's preaching. Uh, it, it's just, uh, it's really not. It's really not about, about people, race. People have, have been confused for a long time. You know, the clip you played earlier about, you know, all the people calling in, and the lady first said, you know, she didn't like Johnny's attitude. Right. And then you played all of those clips of people talking about he ought to leave town or, you mm-hmm. know, just... They're they're the ones with the bad attitude, exactly you know, right. and they just they're blinded by the the false doctrine that's been uh, taught in the community for so long, they just can't see past it. Well, Mark, here's what here's what I want I want the community to see. See, we're trying to show if you if you follow what God says, you, you won't have all this this tension. Now, I want to call to the the viewers' attention this article. And said we mentioned it a little bit ago, a few days ago. But this article that ran in Monday's paper, the Danville Register and B, and it's and it's praising Bible Way. Now, here's what here's what the article says: the congregation dedicates a new building to the late founder, activist Bishop Smallwood E. Williams. Now, this this is what one part of the article said about Smallwood Williams, and it says this: Smallwood E. Williams a civil rights activist and founder of the Worldwide Church. That's the Bible way. All right, he's, he's the founder of that. Now, my, my point is, Smallwood Williams is being praised as a civil rights activist. I don't really want to say anything about Bible way at this point uh, as far as the, a, a church of men. The fact that they, they say he's the founder shows that, he's not, that it's not the, the, the Lord's church. True church, that's right. But... Civil rights activists, you know, when you hear that, I think of someone who is opposing racism, right? Wouldn't you think of that? Mm -hmm. But now what I want to show the community is Bible Way is really not, uh, what, upholding that tradition of their founder in that regard. They're actually, I want to say, oh, I'll just let you be the judge. I'll let someone be the judge about what they're promoting. Mm -hmm. Let's go and take a phone call. I think I know where you're going. (laughs) You're on the air. Hello? You're on the air. All right. Okay, well, so here's what, here's what we're talking about. Now, uh, the building, they say, this building, that they, it's a multi-purpose building, and they say this building will serve as a place. Now, this is what Lawrence G. Campbell, the self-appointed chief apostle of the world, says. This building will serve as a place of worship, recreation, education, and will be used for the development of people holistically, holistic, holistically, regardless of race, ethnicity, or cultural differences. All right? So this is, you know, they're making a stand. We're going to see if, if the fruits or the words actually contradict that. You're on the air. Yes, I would like to know what are you uh, 
trying to say civil rights actually mean. Turn your TV down, sir. Turn your TV down, please. Now, what was the question again? The question is, I would like to know what are you um, saying that civil rights mean, or what are you referring to this church is um, out of guidelines on? Well, when I, I said when I see the phrase civil rights activist, I generally think of someone who was trying to get rid of racism and bring about the equality that actually the Bible promotes. Uh, is is that your think, definition? Uh, you don't think that the, um, that church is doing that, that job? Well, let me play you this clip and let me see what, and can I just get your reaction? You tell us what you think. All right. Now listen. This is one of the members from Bible Way. Turn it up. I'm going to move back here. All right. Let me see if I can get here. Jack, get the gossip place. Gabby? Nope. That's his car? No, that's not his car. He's not here. Who are you, a cop or something? Turn your TV I'm down, sir. I'm a contractor sir. doing work here. Oh, okay. I belong here. Oh, no, I'm not. No, you asked me who was I. I'm asking hey, you who are you. I'm Johnny Robinson. Can oh, you hear okay, it? then ask exactly who you yeah, are. Okay. You asking who I am. Uh, are you upset about something? No, no, okay. I just saw you stooping are you, around. Uh, are you an authority here? Yeah, no, I'm authority not. here. No, you're not. I'm a this my church, I go to it. This is your church. I'm no, authority not. here. No, you're not. I'm a this my church, I go to it. This is your church. Your that's right. Oh, man. All right, so he, he just said he goes to Bible Way. Now, that's, I want you to hear that. Now, listen to what he says over here. Now, what do you think he meant by you white people? Okay, yeah, I, I kind of understand where you're coming from on that one. That was just one person of the church, but do the, do the uh, pastor himself um, support, support that, you know, um, as you was teaching, you talking about the, uh, that, that Christ, we all is in Christ by spirit. Um, Christ says, you know, come to him through spirit that the flesh is dead in Romans. The point that I'm getting here is uh, maybe that man was just speaking out of the flesh and his, his uh, pastor do not appreciate or maybe he talked to him about the matter right there. Right. Well, I'm just saying I'd, li I'd like to know if, if the authorities would actually, you know, call in and make a, uh, uh, a statement, have a statement about one of their members' behaviors. I can assure you this, if it was a member of the Church of Christ made, made a statement like that, I mean, we'd be getting grief. And rightly so. And rightly so, you know. We, we would be, we would be uh, uh, reprimanding that individual and we would certainly demand repentance, you know, for that behavior because that is certainly not, you know, in accordance with the, with the Scripture. And so, so do you, you think that the folks from Bible Way, the, maybe even Chief Apostle Lawrence Campbell would, would, would call in and, and comment on that? Well, I hope he would. Um, as a Christian myself, I'm, I'm a pastor myself. So, um, you know, on his behalf, I'm hoping that he's a righteous, righteous person in, in Christ. Uh, what, Galatians what you, tells us that um, who got baptized in Christ have been raised in Christ, that we are neither male nor female, nor bond nor free, nor Greek nor Jew. So therefore, you know, we neither black or white, neither within the Lord. So, you know, maybe this is just a common error or mistake on his behalf. You know, the flesh um, get through the best of all of us. Right. Um, so well, remember this he... might have been just one of his times of downfall. Or right. maybe when you all pulled up that, you know, he was already in a bad... Um, you know, situation or had a bad day. You know, people Maybe. have them. Well, that's that's possible. But, but, yeah, but, but he it. also said he is an authority. I mean, he he addressed himself, or he what a, uh, he introduced himself as an authority for the church. That's right. He he so, did. So yes, I I really do understand that where you're coming from. But now the civil rights, as a civil right activist, um, they 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 help blacks, whites, and we you know even to this day and time now. They help um, Latinos and anyone else who uh, been mistreated badly. Right. I'm trying to say that this church was not is not standing for that, correct? Well, I don't know. I'm, I I haven't had a, had a statement from them one way or the other regarding that. I'm just saying I would like to know what they would say about this man who's presenting himself okay. as an authority. Okay, okay I understand where you're coming from. So, I sure appreciate it. Right. All right, sir. Yes. Uh, you say you are a member at um, Bible Way. 
I mean, no, I'm not. I'm oh, not a okay. member at Baba Way. Um, I'm a pastor, and uh, I have my own church of the glory, glory Church of Jesus Christ um, on Wendell Scott Drive. Would, okay. Would you, uh, would you uh, be open to someone coming by and visiting with you sometime, asking some questions, maybe uh, just examining what the church is like where you are? Oh, yes. You can come, you can come to my church anytime, ask any questions. Okay. On Wednesdays, we have a questionnaire night. Any questions you want to ask about the Bible, you're welcome to come there. Okay. Bring anyone there, news camera, and ask any question. Um, we don't pay tithings there. All right. Um, it is a free will church. Anyone can come. We love any color, creed, any, any kind of person you want to bring to the church. Uh, we believe in having the spirit of Jesus Christ. And our goal is at this church, at our church, is to uh, actually put everybody to take off the fleshly body and put on the spiritual body of Christ. Okay. It don't matter what color you is or creed. So you, you're welcome to come we, to my church. We, uh, we, 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 we're uh, sounding 15. a lot of like. We're sounding a lot of like in a lot of things. So tell me once again, the, the name of the church and where it is? Glorious Church of Jesus, Spirit and Truth Ministry. Okay. On Wendell Scott Drive in Danville, Virginia. Okay. My, uh, <clears throat> a member of my church uh, came to my house tonight and brought me a flyer, I believe, uh, about a setup tent with questionnaires. Right. Uh, uh, answering questions. Right. And she said she wanted to get the gas, told me to come in there and ask y'all some questions. I oh. believe that it's y'all, y'all, you that, all. That's, that's us. Um, that's us. Tomorrow you got night. one night. Tomorrow night is the last night. Of okay, the, yes. Tomorrow night is the last night. To, we've been going for two weeks. If, you're, if your member just got the flyer, it's because we've been, uh, it's, just a, it's just a fluke because we have been all over Danville. And, you know, just. 15,000. Just happened. Dollars. Just happened that. You know, we just got to, we just got to some people today. I know, but uh, tomorrow night's the last night. We've been going since June the twenty second, so tomorrow oh, night's the last night. She, she brought it to me tonight. Uh, we would have been love to get you fifty dollars every night. I got okay. a whole lot of members that need gas. All right, we'll bring we'll bring we'll bring them tomorrow night. If you bring if she brings you tomorrow night, and we have uh just let me lay out the format. We have the uh -huh. preaching. We have the preaching. Then there's a, a, a closing prayer, and then it's asked, does anybody have a question? Uh, at that point, that would be when you could raise your hand, and there's a, there'll be a microphone set up for you. You could step, okay. to the, step to the microphone. It'll be at the, about the middle of the tent. You can step to the microphone, ask your question, uh, and she'll give, you know, you can tell where you are and where you're from and, and so forth, and ask the question, and there may be, you know, we may have a little dialogue, but she'll get, she'll get the gas. The gas cards are actually hanging on a hanging on a string at the front of the tent every night, so they'll they'll be there. Yeah, we show sure we'll come. We'll be there. You say, what time do it start? Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. We'll be there. Okay. All right. We'll look forward to seeing you. Uh huh. Thanks yeah, for, I'm looking thanks. forward to see you all. Thanks, thanks for your call. call. Another good call. Man, Mark, we just <laughs> on a roll. On a roll. All right. So, well, you know, I appreciate I appreciate what he was saying. I mean, here's a man yeah. who addressed himself as an authority. By the way. And uh, I would, I would hope that maybe somebody would call, and maybe, maybe the chief apostle would rain, would, would, uh, uh, what, uh, uh, not rain in on this, but uh, uh, call in on this, weigh in on this. I'd like to know, it. you know, are they just going to let it pass, or, or do they right. have a way to? Does he have to repent for making a statement well, that's like what I'm that? Saying. I'd yeah. like to say, I'd like to know, you know, someone weigh in on it and say, this is what, this is, this is what would happen. If one of our members uh, was involved in something public like this, mm -hmm. this is what we would say, this is what we would do, this is what would be expected of him, and, and so forth. So, uh, you on the air? Yes, how you doing this evening? I'm doing well. Well, listen, I just have tuned in to your program there and uh, kind of caught a little glimpse of it and not really sure what's going on. But uh, what I gathered from some of your conversation was is I wanted to ask you this question. When Jesus, uh, I, I may be wrong about this, I'm not really, um, you know, knowledgeable about everything, but when Jesus went into the synagogue, I guess it was a synagogue, and turned mm -hmm. the tables over, you know, and got all upset over this, um, whatever that was going on, can you fill me in of what that was about? Uh, when he overturned the money changers? Yes. 
All right, let's just, let's just see if we can get the Bible up here so we can all read it together. Uh, John 2. <coughs> Excuse me. John 2, let's come on down to about verse 12. Uh, after this, he went down to Capernaum. He and his mother and his brethren and his disciples, they came there many, not many days. And the Jews' Passover was at hand. Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the change of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small, small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the change of money and overthrew the tables and said to them that sold doves, Take these things hence, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. And disciples remember that it was written, The zeal of thine house hath eaten him, uh, hath eaten me up. Now, your question is, what? why did he do that? Yes. Well, because they had, what they were doing was they were taking uh, the uh, animals. See, the Jews could, if the Jews were coming from a long distance for the Passover, if the, they had to bring a sacrifice. But the law stipulated, and I'd have to find that, that uh, reference, the law stipulated that they could exchange it, they could change uh, their animals into money for the journey and then when they got to Jerusalem they could then buy the animals required for the sacrifice okay okay so I'm going to say it's in uh, Deuteronomy somewhere or, or uh, yes yeah, Deuteronomy Brandon but I'm not sure now my but, question is okay isn't uh, what you're saying uh, uh, about your church or whatever you're trying to promote or whatever, uh, isn't that kind of the same type of uh, thing in a way, or is it not? I'm I'm kind of confused. Um, is that now, now? Say it again. What what I'm doing? Yes. <clears throat> is what making merchandise? Well, yes, in a, in a, in a way, like in other words, you're you're doing the uh, concept of uh, racism or whatever. You're trying to um, sell this type of thing or exchange this type of thing for the the, the audience to uh, buy what you're selling. I, I, am I wrong? Are you talking about buying and selling figuratively or literally? Uh, well, I'm talking about figuratively, like uh, what, what, you're, what you're trying to represent. Uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm really confused about this okay. thing. I want to understand okay. it. I want to know what you're saying. I, okay. Because I, I, I'm a very uh, powerful believer in God Almighty and Jesus Christ, and I know what he says, and I know what he did, and and I want to make sure that you hear my voice tonight because it's very important that God says, beware of those that come like this he says uh, I'm not sure well, if I'm correctly saying you know they're in their sheep in wolves clothing or something like that yeah, I don't know I'm, I'm just kind of confused about yeah. that well let, let me just sit, let me finish maybe this maybe that'll help what Jesus was condemning was the fact that when they did exchange their money for animals they were actually selling the oxen and the sheep and, and so forth at an exorbitant rate they were actually making merchandise on these individuals who came to town only having money because they, ha they had to have the sacrifice. You know, it's just like if you're traveling on the road and you have to have a hotel room and it's the only hotel room left, well, they're going to jack the rates up. Right, I understand Because they that. can get a high price for it. And so he was, you know, he was condemning them because they were making merchandise. They were actually taking advantage of the fact that these individuals had to buy these animals. And, you know, and so they were, they were taking advantage of their brethren. Now, what we're doing, I mean, of course, obviously, you know, we're not, we're not literally selling DVDs and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that. That's it. Uh, Deuteronomy 14, uh, 24 through 26 is what I'm talking about. They could exchange their sacrifice for, uh, for money. But, but what we're doing on this program is we're actually showing that individuals who haven't followed the, the Word of God when it comes to churches, that they actually promote disunity, and I'm going to show how I'm going to show that's the case in just a moment. Okay, now when you say they're following churches, now that brings up another point in in, in this conversation. 
I mean, who you don't supposed to follow churches. You're supposed to follow Christ and you know His Him, His personal uh, Holy Spirit within you and Him. Is my understanding about that? Is, am, am I wrong? Well, do you do you agree that Jesus has a church? Yes. So wouldn't you want to follow His church? I w- well, when you say His church, now He has a church overall. You know, but I'm not talking about an individual, independent church. You know, nothing like that because man-made stuff. You know all about that. But right. I'm just saying that I think that Jesus would look at uh, us now, thinking we're ignorant people, which we are. And if it wasn't for Him, we wouldn't be anything to begin with. But I'm just saying I, I appreciate everything that you guys are doing and. And uh, I, I give him a blessing, uh, you know, from what I have, which ain't much. But I just thank you, and I just wanted to say what I wanted to say and, and, and say, may God be with you, and I hope you're uh, very successful in what you're doing. And uh, I'm, my prayers are with you, and, I, and I, I praise God for what you're trying to do and what okay. you want to accomplish. And I give God the glory for all of it. Thank Sir, you. Are, are you not in any church? Sir? Sir? I wasn't really sure what what the caller was trying to say. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I don't know if he was saying we were, maybe I, I was asking were we trying to stir up something between churches. That that's really not not my, my my point with this. Is my point is I believe you know the principle is when you get away from the Bible, then you're going to leave out some things, you know, because you start following after what you want to do. You're 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 trying to build up a man-made church, and that's that's never going to be good. Uh, what line was he? Was he three? I believe he was three. I'm not sure. Then I'll take four. All right, you're on the air. Hello. Uh, I just want to ask you a question. Okay. Uh, I visit a church here locally, and uh, I confided in the preacher that was there something personal in my life. Is it right for him to go and tell the whole congregation what I said? Uh, I think you want to talk to him about that. I, mean, I don't really know. I mean, I don't know what the what what kind of agreement he had with you. If he he might have not understood that it was confidential. I don't I don't know. I, I can't really speak on the matter. I don't. Well, I had him in a corner whispering. Okay. Well, that'll be your word against his. Then. Yeah, I just say, um, you know, I I, I don't know. I, I don't know what the situation was. I really. You know the Bible says uh, a fool answers a matter before he before he heareth it, and uh, I would think I would hope that he had your best interest at heart, but I don't. But you know I can't. I, I don't know when it comes to some of these. Uh, well, it's hinging on me whether to go back or not. That question is. Well, it. it uh, I, I don't. I mean, I don't think it would be. Uh, I mean, I think I would ask him what what you know why he did it then. Okay. Thank you, then. Um, do you, you mind asking what, mind we ask what, what it was, what the preacher was, who the preacher was? I'd rather not say. He don't want to be on TV about, he don't want to get messed up, messed up y'all talking about. Okay, well, I mean, if he, if you had a... That's, that's what I was yeah. talking to him okay. about anyway. Okay. Okay. I, like I said, I, I don't think I really answered your question, but, and I, I'm sorry. I just, huh. but if he, you know, like I said, I don't know if he had your best interest at heart, but... Knowing uh, some of these sectarian preachers, they're not teaching the truth. They don't have your best. You know, they interest. don't have your best interest heart. That's so, right. uh, if it's a, you know, if it's a church of men, one of these churches that man has founded and started and so forth, not in the Bible. I, I would, I would, I would leave whether the man uh, said something about Everyone else or not. was gone before I even talked to him. Make sure nobody else heard it. Right. Well, what I would do is I'd leave. I'd leave all these denominational churches. Whether they talked about me or not, that would be my advice. Okay, thank you. Then. All right. You know, yeah. Anybody that's anybody that's even uh, if you're visiting a church that's not in the Bible, they definitely uh, don't. They have definitely don't have your best interest heart. That's, I'd, that's right. I'd leave whether they talked about me or not. <clears throat> you on the air? Yes. Um, I just had one question. I wanted to know how y'all felt about interracial marriage. Interracial marriage. Yeah. Uh, if the if uh, the two people, how about how the Bible speaks about? Yeah, if, that's 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 the better answer. Uh, 
God's law on marriage is, is simply this. It's not that. Somebody doesn't know I'm on TV. Uh, Matthew 19, 9. Oh, excuse me, Matthew 19, 6. Here's God's law on marriage. God which made them at the beginning made them male and female. There's the first, there's the first qualification for marriage. Uh, they shall leave father and mother, cleave to his wife, and the twain shall be one flesh. And what God has joined together, let not man put asunder. God's law on marriage was one man, one woman. Now, provided that they are single, they can be married. God doesn't say anything about the race between the two individuals. He simply talks about, you know, are they eligible? And here's why I say that. Verse uh, 9, Jesus said, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her which is put away, doth commit adultery. So, if someone has been put away because they committed adultery, they, they're not eligible to marry. But if someone has put away their mate because their mate committed adultery, they can remarry. They're free to marry. So, but as far as, I mean, that's, that's what God says about marriage, but as far as the race, no, no such uh, distinction is made in the Bible. Is that... Okay. Does that help you? Uh, yes, that's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Is that do you? Would you? Uh, would you have a tendency to agree or disagree with that? Oh no, I completely agree. Okay. Come on out to the tent tomorrow. Oh, okay, I might. Thank you. All right, seven o'clock. Thanks for your call. Yeah, you know, I, I appreciate that because that's one of the things that we're dealing with too. You know, we're passing out these flyers that say uh, "Mythbusters, Fact, Fact or Fiction." fiction right. And a lot of people think that it's, 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 it's fact that God says that races can't intermarry. And that's, that's, that's fiction. That's, that's a lie. And that's what we're wanting people to come out to the tent for and question these things. We're not ashamed to question. Right. We're, not, we're commanded to answer questions. Right. So. In, the, in the Church of Christ, uh, you know, we have blacks and whites. And as a matter of fact, Martinsville, the, one of the preachers that used to be there was, uh, was a white man married to a black woman. And some of the community wouldn't come because of that, we later found out. And shame on them. That's right. Shame on them. And we've had some members of the, of the church that actually it, uh, was known that they felt uh, ill toward these two, uh, this brother and his sister, because they were married and they were not the same race. And we had to, we had to deal with those individuals. You know, they had to repent of that. So, uh, yes, well, you know, as far as the Bible's concerned, it's, you know, God if you're eligible to marry, if you're eligible to marry, you, you can be married. You on the air? Yes, you were talking about Mark sixteen sixteen. Could you tell me how that H one eight? Say, say uh, I didn't hear the last part of that question. Um, Mark sixteen sixteen. Could you just tell me how that would relate to Mark one eight? Mark one eight. Yes, sir. Okay. Let's look at Mark one eight. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost? Yes, sir. All right. This is John speaking, John the baptizer, right? Right. And he was baptizing Jews a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Right here, John, Mark 1, 4. Jesus, however, was going to come, and one of the things he was going to do was baptize with the Holy Spirit. Now, he wasn't going to baptize everybody with the Holy Spirit because when we read about the baptism of the Holy Spirit coming, it only fell on a certain group of people, the apostles. You know, And so this was simply a statement of John saying, I'm baptizing you to prepare you for him to come, but there's one coming greater that actually is going to be able to administer a baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, and one, th one reason why we know that Christ was not going to baptize everybody with the Holy Spirit because the individuals that John was talking to on some occasions was the Pharisees. And, we, and, we, and they wouldn't even confess Christ, so we know they weren't baptized with the Holy Spirit. 
But as far as Mark 16, 16 is, uh, is concerned, the yep. connection between that is uh, this is a baptism that is being taught as the Great Commission. This is what Jesus actually said, go and preach and teach. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit was not included in the Great Commission, but baptism of water for the mission of sins was what was included. Is that okay? How are we doing? That answers my question. Thank okay. you, sir. All right. Good well, time. I tell you what, I don't know if I'm just uh, hitting a good stride tonight or whatever. We get some good calls, and uh, you know, a lot of times I feel like maybe we, you know, I don't know if we're, you know, it's hard to tell sometimes you, you don't know what a person is understanding, and so it's just like teaching a class. And by the way, you know, I say this, Mark, and I'm going to try to start saying this a little more often. This is the, the biggest Bible class, uh, you know, in two states because instead of raising your hand, all you do is pick up the phone. That's right. That, that's what we're all about. So, uh, uh, anyway. Um, well, I'm so busy, he calls here, he appreciates it. Okay. For DVD stuff. All right. The lines are so busy, he called to get a, get a DVD. You're on the air. Hello? Yes, hello. Oh, this is the uh, minister of the Bible. Yeah, this is the minister of the I'm sorry, you you were breaking up on you. Are you on a cell phone? Hello? Hello? I'm on a house phone. Okay, we're getting a, bad, a, a real bad connection. Try again. That's hello? Turn your TV down. You may be listening on a delay. Hello? Uh, sir, I apologize for that. We, we couldn't, we couldn't, uh, we could hardly hear you. So try, try back again. We'll try to do better. Turn your TV down, folks. If you're calling in, turn your TV down, please, because we can't, we can't hear you. Listen to the phone, not the TV. You're on the air. Hello. Hello, you're on the air. Hi. Um, I'm calling in regards to uh, the, in, the question about the interracial marriages that was on there a little bit uh, yes, earlier. Ma yes, ma'am. Uh, the way I understand God created... Uh, the different races, uh, he created them both male and female. And uh, to me, and it kind of like common sense that God made the uh, white man and then he made the white female for this white man and so on throughout the races. And I Ma mean, shouldn't we stay with our own race like the animals stay with their own animals. You don't see dogs breeding with cats. Oh. No, but you're right. You know what? But you know what you do see? I, I've seen I've seen white cows breed with black cows. Well, now that may be so, but we're not talking about. Um, I mean, God made male and female. We're talking about man here. We talk. I know about we're animals, talking about man. Right. We're not talking about the animals. But right? you're, well, well, man, but you're comparing dogs breeding with cats. Those are two different species. Are okay, you saying well, are you saying that man, that a black person all is the a different races of man on the earth? I mean, he made male and female uh, of of all the races, and so no, therefore, no, to no, me, no, no, no. Wait a minute, but what, look at this. Right. sense that he made a help meet for each man of each race, and I just don't believe that um, we should be into all this interracial stuff. You know, I well, don't even think you all should even be. Ex ex uh, you know, talking about it fully or trying to encourage anybody. Why? Well, ma'am, here's what we're saying, though. You, are you saying that, I mean, you actually used the analogy of, of a dog and a cat, not... We're not, not talking about dogs and but cats. You, we're talking about you men are, and women. Ma'am, you of, brought up dogs and cats. Races. You we're brought up dogs and cats. Uh, men and women. I know. We're talking about men and women, ma'am. Are you uh, saying... And we're are talking you saying, about different races. Are you saying and one, I, ma every are you man saying that God one made, race? he made a help meet. Uh, he made a woman for... All right. Look at this. Race. He made a help meet. Did he make a help... What? What? Well, by the way, what race was Adam and Eve? Well, um, you know, again, I'm saying that you're being um, somewhat... Um, well... Just put it like this. He didn't make no Adam and Steve, that's for sure. And he made both of them the same color, I would assume. Are, are you sure? Well, I How mean, you know? I'm not. No, I'm not 100% sure. Are you sure he didn't? I'm, I'm, sure he, I'm sure that he made Adam and Eve, and from them came all the races. Everybody came from Eve. 
Oh, I know that. Yes, then, I know then, that. Well, then if they if they all came from Eve, why can't they all intermarry? Just because it may be a different a different color. Well, you know, going back again, like what we was talking about, I just think that you know, like if if there's say like a Chinese man, uh, I think he needs to marry a Chinese woman. I think why? that. Just common sense. No, no that's not common sense. People that God made male and female. Right here. Of uh, you know us humans, and I would think by making male and female of you know each uh, race that He would intend for the race to stay pure. And Man, not what, mix. But, but the race wasn't pure to start with. That what what race was Adam and Eve? You know, whatever race Adam and Eve is, uh, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about, um, you know, I mean, are you trying to say Adam and Eve was made of different races? If uh, you are, I have never seen that in the Bible, and I've well, never look at heard this it. Right here. Well, read this in the Bible. Can you, can you see this? Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of the white people. I'll leave it. I'll leave it. Amen. Okay, now, will that, be, will that include white people? You tell me who it excludes. Tell me who is not, who is not a child of Eve, of Adam and Eve. White we're people, all, black uh, people, a child brown people. Of Eve, but she just like we are of are God, but still and yet, it doesn't say it's okay to marry into but another race. But ma'am, here's what we're saying. Though, look, at, when God made Adam and Eve, He put within them all of the genes DNA. necessary to create man. That's why Mark's taught. I'm a little short. That's why I have red hair. What hair I have is red. And Mark's may be brown or blonde. That's why some people are blonde-haired, blue-eyed, and some people are dark-haired and brown-eyed. But they're all, they're all human beings. They all came from the so same you mother. you insult my intelligence when I'm you not, say that. Of course we're all human beings. And, well, and what I'm trying to you, say to you is, I'm why not, would God make us male and female of the same race? Uh, you know, if he wanted us to mix, why didn't he just, you know, uh, I mean, do you think I it, just don't do you, believe that God Do you God think it might have been because he knew mix. some people were going to have problems that, okay. you know, with getting over a different skin color, and he wanted you to understand that what God makes is something special? It doesn't matter what they look like on the outside? God looks on the inside. I don't think God, I just don't think God intended for, uh, you know, let's say, um, I don't think God intended for um, you think God is a respectable person, Chinese or, or so on like that, because He did make them male and female, and you know that's just the way I believe, and and I really don't think it's a good thing for you guys to say that uh, what the Bible there's says. no problems with interracial marriages. Well, let me ask you this: How is this little children to? go through this world and be an interracial, it's got to be a very, very I don't think hard so. thing and heartbreaking thing for a child I don't think to so. have to live with. On, only for people... You know, being it's, interracial. it's only a problem, ma'am, it'll only be a problem for them when they come across individuals who think that whites should marry whites and blacks should marry blacks and brown should marry browns and yellow should marry, 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 marry yellow. That's who's going to give them trouble. Can I, well, ask, you, can you I know, ask you a question um, about Moses? Like right here. How, how do you feel I mean, about why Moses? God would make a male and female uh, of the same race if he didn't intend for us to keep our race pure? Ma'am, and it doesn't a, have anything to do with making male and female of the same race. If a black man and a white woman got together and produced a child, well, aren't they creating an entirely different race? No. Why? They're all part of the human race. Excuse me? They're all part of the human race. Yeah, but, I mean, I, you know, I'm Caucasian, you're Caucasian. I mean, we're talking about color here, you know. Well, and when, I, that's exactly Let's right. say if I married a China man or something, um, my child, the race would not be pure. Are you, are, well, what's so, what's so special about the white race? There's nothing special about the race. I bet, ma'am, I, 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 I would suggest if you did a little, little genealogy research, you might be surprised what kind of blood in your veins. All of them are precious in the sight of the Lord, and 
God loves his, his all of his people regardless of what they're raised. Ma'am, do you he know loves, what you're saying? Do you I know what you're saying? I just don't believe listen. it's proper for us to, you know, to mix. Ma'am, listen, here's what you're saying. God loves us all, but yes, yet he God, does. no, no, stop. Now, you've had your chance. You're saying God loves us all, but yet he wants us to be pure because he, does, because he doesn't love us if we're mixed. No, I didn't say anything about God didn't love us if we're mixed. Well, that's what you're, that's the conclusion. No, 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 sir. I didn't say so that. If, you're saying well, that. Well, let me ask you this. If so a, if a, you're, if two like people, it's okay for two, if two people, if two people of a different race marry, is it a sin? Will you answer that? If two people of a different race marry, is it a sin? All of his children. If two people of a, of a different race marry, is it a sin? No, I don't think it's a sin. But I so just, then, why is it? Why are you making a problem about it? I just don't think God intended it. You know it that what? Way, since you know what, ma'am? I think I think races. you believe that you are superior than other races. No, you're trying to tell me what I believe. Sir. No, I'm just saying that's the conclusion I'm going to come to. If you're going to say that white should marry whites and black I, should marry blacks, the white race is supremacy, <clears> thing like that. I think all races are precious in the eyes of the Lord, but I think it's you that encourages these people to go out here and mix. It's one Who's reason that we have so many problems in the world today. No. Because you know what, man? If we were all mixed, if we mixed. were all mixed, we wouldn't have this problem because everybody would look the same color. The problem comes when everybody goes, well, we didn't have whites over here and browns over here and yellows over here. You know what? I don't even want to talk this with, with you anymore because okay. you need to read the Bible. Well, you need to... All right, let me read. Will you read this verse before you go? I don't want you to How do you feel about Moses? Me, I've got my Bible here How do you feel and I about know Moses? what my Bible says, you know, well, well, and I don't, well, I don't go around the Bible, here right and here. Uh, encourage people to marry different races and stuff because I've got common sense enough to know that when God made me whatever color I am, he made a black uh, or white or regardless. You know what, ma'am? No, but not color. everybody is black he made a man or white. For me. Not everybody is black or white. Some, not everybody is black or white. Don't Some people in the black that? community. You are so have, insulting to my ma intelligence. Ma'am, you're insulting the intelligence of all the viewers. Not everybody in the black community is jet black, and not everybody in the white community is pure white. So, so tell me what color, you know, what color should I, what color person should I marry? See, because not everybody is pure white, not everybody is pure black. There's going to be some browns in here now. Do we need to go and get a, <clears throat> go down to Sherwin Williams and get a color test, you know, to see exactly what color skin you are? Because you know what, ma'am? I want to show you this. Now, you tell me what color person I should marry. Look at this. Now, there, that, that, that's one color. But look at their hair. Look at the difference. You know, Lily White. Why? I've been out in the sun. Now, do I need to go get another white because now my skin's color different? Come on, ma'am. We're talking about, we're talking about the difference in, in color of skin. And we're talking about looking at people on the inside. You want to talk about reading your Bible? The Bible says God looks on the inner man, not the outer, not the outer man. Now, what would you say about Moses? Look at this. Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. Now, you know what, ma'am? I think if you were in Miriam's place, in Aaron's place, you would have something to say about Moses marrying this black woman. But you know what God said? God said about Moses, God said, uh, Moses was meek. Here's what the Lord said. The Lord spake suddenly to Moses and Aaron and said unto Miriam, Come ye, come out ye three into the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And the Lord came down the pillar of the cloud and stood in the tabernacle, door of the tabernacle and called Miriam, Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If I, if there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision. And I will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so. He says, I, he's not like all these other prophets that I appear in a vision. He said, Moses is faithful in all my house, even though he's married a black woman. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold, wherefore... Then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses because he married a black woman? Now, ma'am, if you want to read your Bible, you know, you want to talk about reading your Bible? My Bible seems to stress that God 
actually defended a man who married someone who was of a different race. So don't give me all this, well, we need to keep the race pure. Ma'am, there's, there's not a pure white person in the world. There's not a pure black person in the world. There's not a pure brown person in the world. What, what is pure? We all came from the same mother. Now, you know, don't tell me I'm, I'm insulting your intelligence. I'm trying to help you with some intelligence, yeah, ma'am. Yeah. You on the air? Yes, hello, this is the Ministry of Life Cushion. Yes. Uh, I called you earlier. Yeah, we had a bad connection. All right, sorry about that. Go ahead. Yes, uh, I'm Minister Lyons Kush from, uh, <clears throat> I called you earlier um, and told you where my church is and y'all can come. And I do these Bible studies and um, let me try to give you a little help on that last woman where she was trying to, she was misinformed and you can try to help her over, over the airway. And anyone else who had this question, what they're referring to is in Genesis chapter 24, where God told Abraham, do not take a Canaanite for his wife. Well, of course, we know the Canaanites are Caucasian because they came off the uh, <clears throat> north. I don't know that. You don't know what? I don't know that they're Caucasian. Oh, you, you don't? No. Do you know what color they were? How do you know what color they were? Because when you look at Caucasian, when you look at the Canaanites, the Canaanite says, when you look up the word Canaanite in any, any form, it says they was an albino. They was non-Negro descendants. They was uh, Caucasian. They was white. Okay, go ahead. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, I don't know that for a fact, but I'm, I'm listening to you. Okay. Um, they, they was cursed by color at this time. Um, like the book of um, um, the book uh, Leviticus tell you that, uh, you know, people was cursed with the, um, leprosy. And they became white as snow. Um, they, they was also, they, they went to, the, the people of the Canaanites because they blended with the people of the Canaanites. But <clears throat> anyway, the Canaanites had many of colors and, and you know, not trying to stay, stay in about the color, but the point of the uh, situation was that um, that statement was only trying to give into Abraham, which I think you would try to get to your viewer, was to, uh, God told him not to marry a Canaanite for the simple reason that they was not at this time godly people. These were the Canaanites, the Hittites, the uh, the Archites, the Canaanites, the Presidites. All of these types from the Canaanites tribe, they was not uh, a god, god people of descent. That's why they was at war with the, the Hebrews all through the biblical text. Right. And um, <clears throat> another good verse to back that up is in Deuteronomy, verse uh, chapter twenty-one, right. verse they, eleven. They could they could marry someone they captured. They can marry someone they captured. Right. They, and in order to marry someone they captured, they had to bring them to the house and make sure they was, uh, you know, within within the right laws and rules of, of the Lord, and they was, uh, you know, uh, right. cleansed cleanse with spirit. And as you saying, you know, as you know, I'm I'm agreeing with you that uh, right. once we is is it was by whole, uh, by by being in faith in, in Christ. And likewise, that uh, again, I say, you know, we fought without, you know, bond nor free nor male nor female nor you know Jew or Greek or that means black or white. And um, I, I think you. I don't, I don't think it means black or white because a Jew, a, a Jew could be of any race if they were circumcised. If they were part of the covenant of Abraham, they were considered that, a Jew. That's correct. Uh, um, that is that is right. that is by law. Um, but I always also teach people is this right here. One of the things that she was trying to explain to her about the color and who they should marry is name a person from, name a race with where they're from and how you get a color from it. You can't say a person is Mexican. So what if he's Mexican, that's the country he live in. Right. What color is he? Right. You know, a color is something that we put there. So a race is something that we put there. She said a, a Chinese person. Well, that's that's the country we gave the word China, China, China to. We just she just telling us where this man is from. But she, you know, you, that, that's not a color. Africa is, is, you know, as well. My ancestors come from that, but that's just a, a country. They don't tell you anything about anything else. The biblical texts do not divide nobody down in a color. So right. I, I was just calling to try to give you a, a okay. way to try to explain. Some, some people is listening. I understand that you was trying, you was giving her great knowledge, but she wasn't getting it. Jesus says he's speaking parable, and I was just listening. And I, maybe I can give you a little hand on it by giving you a different way of looking at it, a, a situation. Um, right. 
and that forth. Because yeah. I see where people are coming from about, um, you know, the black and white marriage or any kind of marriage or mix of racial, uh, interracial uh, marriages and where it comes from. But they haven't read it all. Uh, you know, they take one part and they just keep running out. Right. That's what a lot of people do nowadays. A lot of pastors That's do that right. nowadays. They just take one verse and they just clearly run out with that and they don't get the whole scripture. Right. Well, I appreciate you calling back and giving some, maybe that'll help her. That'll All right, thank you. Her. All right, thank you. Well, you know, and I, I want to say this too about but about the Canaanite. I want to make a little, uh, maybe a little, uh, differ a little bit with uh, the gentleman on that. Uh, I, I don't know what color they were, uh, uh, but, but, I, but I do know this, that it was always about their ungodly. That's why in Deuteronomy 7, which I have up here, God says when you come into the land, and cast out these many nations, you know, the, the Hittites and the Gergeshites and the, and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Mm, you know, you don't marry them because they, that was the, the fullness of time was come for them, Genesis 15, 16. God was going to destroy them because of their wickedness. So, yeah, um, I, I don't know why anyone would say you, you can't marry someone because of their color. You shouldn't. Uh, <clears throat> don't mind a little You on the air? Yeah, how you doing, James? I'm doing good. Uh, doesn't say in Acts we're all from the same blood. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, doesn't it say in Acts that we are all from the same blood? It does. Acts 17, 26. Right. And as far as the term race, the only reference to a race that I know of in the Bible is the type of race you run. That's right. And, you know, I, I think if you, if you study that history, the term race didn't come about until after Darwinism and after all this nonsense about evolution. And so when people start talking about races, if they're talking about any race in the Bible, it's the one you run. I well, I, I, I will say this, though, Carl, too. In, in Matthew 28, 19... Jesus said, go you therefore and teach all nations. And that word is actually ethnos, you know, which actually would, uh, it actually would be defined as a tribe, you know, or a, 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 uh, a race of the same habit, all right? Someone who, you know, or we might say a, a culture. So there are a lot of individuals who may have the same color, but are different in ethnicity. And that, so in other words, when, when Jesus gave the Great Commission, he actually, he actually divided it down even further than just color. You know, he, he actually broke it down into, you know, different ethnic groups, ethnicities. In other words, because, you know, the, uh, let's say sometimes we might say Hispanic, but that would, you know, that, that's kind of a broad term, isn't it? That includes, what, people in Cuba, Puerto Rico, Mexico, Absolutely. But but if you if you break down, you know, but those all have different ethnicities. So, uh, in other words, when Jesus gave the Great Commission, he's saying let's let's not leave out any body. Amen. And so, uh, but I appreciate your call. Thank you. All right. You're on the air. Hello. I've. Uh, how y'all doing tonight? Doing great. Good. I was wonder who is that man that was in, standing in the middle of that field with the yellow shirt. I, I don't know what his name was. Uh, he just identified himself as an authority from Bible Way. What he had to do with what he had to do with the problem? I'm sorry. So, what he had to do with the uh, situation to, for tonight? We were, we were discussing we were discussing some something that he said, and we were we were pointing out that he. You want me to just play it again for you? Yeah. Are you the man? Yeah. Are you the man? No. Okay. He uh, at this point he says, "Let me see here." I go play your game well, someplace see, the thing else. Is you're it's my church. I go to it. This your church. Turn your TV down a little bit. I'm authority here. No, you're not. I'm a, this is my church. I go to it. This your church. All right. So he my... says Bible Way Cathedral is his church. He goes to it. So he's identifying himself as an authority. He's as an authority. And this is what we want, what we were, were discussing. 
a comment that he made. I'm getting here to it. No, you don't. No, you don't. Go ahead. Man. Oh, you white people suck down here. Oh, good. You white people suck down here. Hear that? Oh, good. You white people yeah. suck down here. Oh, so he's talking about you white people. And we were just asking, is this a representative of Bible Way Cathedral? Is he promoting racial unity and harmony, or is he actually making it wider by using terms like you white people. Because see, in the Church of Christ, you know, we're not just white people. You know, we're all kinds of, of different people. And we were just asking the question, what would anybody from Bible Way think about that or would they, how would they feel about that? This being a representative of Bible Way Cathedral, would they say that he should repent, that he, wasn't, that he, he was saying something wrong or no problem with it? Well, I think that he then wasn't like y'all, but he uh, he ain't prejudiced against white people. He just didn't like y'all at all. Well, but why did he say you white people? You white people. As it, I mean, I, I can assure you if I said you and I inserted the color, and said, people, everybody would take that as racially derogatory, wouldn't you think? Yeah. And so I'm just I saying. Think he was being over, I think he was being overprotective about the church. Okay. But, and so I'm saying, is that, so you're giving him a pass? Do you go to Bible Way Cathedral? Yeah. Okay. Man, it's funny how you ask. If you go to a certain church or where you go and, it, and you get the dial tone fast, you know, if that was if that was a member of Bible Way Cathedral, he was actually defending. I'm saying if that was, he was actually defending the, this uh, a statement by this man. Where were we? Three or four? Uh, I think you're on four now. Oh, oh, that's all right. <laughs> you on the air? Yes. Good evening, gentlemen. Um, in reference to the lady that called in about the black and white issue. Yes, ma'am. God is not white, nor is she black. So what is she going to do? Throw her husband or boyfriend out with the dishwater? And also I would like to say um, I love that demonstration that you did with your arm. <laughs> At one time you were white. And then as the sun hit you, you turned brown. So as you've already said, what are you supposed to do? Throw yeah. your white wife out and turn around and yeah. find a brown wife? When I, was, when I was in school, ma'am, when I was in school, we went to sporting events. Uh, I, I remember some of the uh, black girls in, in, on, the, on the school actually covering up and putting suntan lotion on because they didn't want to get any darker. Now, you know, I'm, 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 my point is we all recognize the sun is going to change our tone. You know? Exactly. Wh and white white girls, like you know? We're all God's children. Right. We all get lighter when we're not exposed to sun. We all get darker when we are. I mean, that's just the way God made us. So, Exactly. I think she has to turn somewhere. Uh, at one point in time, she even seemed or sounded a little angry. Uh, I think that uh, we should, if we fall in love with a particular person, uh, regardless of the creed or color or religion, then that's who... Uh, we should marry, and I don't think God would put a damper on that. So uh, I, I just honestly think she absolutely missed the turn somewhere. Thank you I, for I, your time. Thank you. And I would just say, I would just add to that, the only thing that God would, like no, we said earlier. Religion. Right. Yeah. Well, and the only thing that God would say about that, I mean, certainly you're not wise if you're trying to serve God. If you're, if you're trying to follow God's will and you marry someone who's not, you're gonna have trouble, you know. If you if you if a child of God marries a child of the devil, you, devil, you're gonna have trouble with the in-laws. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I would also add to there, if you find someone you love and you want to marry, you better make sure that God will join you together. Matthew 19:6. Mm -hmm. So uh, <clears throat> you on the air? Yeah, I was going to ask you a question along them lines. Okay. Uh, people breed uh, horses. They breed it for racing. They breed. They want to breed the same kind to be thoroughbreds. 
so they'll do better. Be running faster. Okay. They want to keep. They want to keep that bloodline. Okay. And if that's not the same case with people, back in those days when it was written, and Adam and Eve were born, how did people get to those other continents that wasn't connected to each other? Well, in Genesis 11, God divided the language, or He confused the language. And it would make sense that people who spoke the same language would congregate or migrate with people who spoke the same language. Well, it, right here in Henry County and Danville and North Carolina, they, people speak different languages we can't understand. Okay. I want to know how they got to different continents. Well, how, how, how do you think they got to different continents? Uh, you tell me. Well, I'm going to say they, they walk, rode, whatever. How, how would they travel? Same, they travel the same way. There wasn't no... Uh, how, how did people I, come... There wasn't no traveling to different continents back then. How do you know? When... when I mean, when, when they dispersed... They had how little do you, bitty fishing boats. You can't go across the ocean. What, do you not really realize that right before that, Noah built a big old honking boat? Now, they had... <laughs> I mean, they had some, they had some and, knowledge about them. And it landed in one place. How did they get to the other continents? Well, sir, well, how do you think they got to the other continents from Europe to America? The that Vi was about eight hundred years later, and they was on a ship. So you don't think they had to, they don't had sense to invent tools and and make and make boats? Yeah, they had little fishing boats back then. Now, how do you know? It's in the Bible. They they had little fishing boats in the Bible. Yeah. Find me the verse that says they had little fishing boats in Genesis eleven. Well, I can't look for it right now. I don't have your Bible program. Well, I just wanted to ask you uh, that. Okay. Uh, okay. I just probably right. got a question for you. All right. I got, oh, I'm getting a wrap-up signal. Got to go. Let me ask you, let me just say this too about thoroughbreds. So, so people breed horses to improve speed, endurance, stuff like that. So, what was the my, thoroughbred? Huh? What was the thoroughbred race? Huh? Right. Well, I'm just. Well, my question would be, what race? Should we all breed together to make the best race? Yeah, that's what I was. I mean, should we keep all the blacks together to get the best race? Or I mean, that's a lot. That's what Hitler was doing. Let's get rid of everybody but the blue-eyed, blonde-haired people, and to have the superior race. Hello, God made everybody equal. That's what we're getting to. So, by the way, sir, if you want a copy of the Origin, the Truth About Origins DVD that Brad Harab uh, some time ago did on this program. Uh, we'll be glad to get you one. He talks about the origin of man and so forth. We'll be glad to get you one. If you'll call back, we'll take your name and number and get it to you. Uh, I've got to wrap up. I can't take any more calls on the uh, on the phone. Last time I did that, uh, last time last time I did that, we uh, uh, got cut off pretty quick. But I do want to say this: uh, tomorrow night's the last night of the tent, three three thirty five Mount Cross Road, right next to Lake Town and Country. In the CarQuest Auto Parts, uh, we had a caller tonight say that they're going to uh, come and Get the uh, gas card. take advantage of the gas card. So you might want to go out and see that. Take advantage of that. Watch it. And watch tomorrow night at 8.30 right here on uh, Star News. And we'll see you then. Have a good night. And I'll ask for what does the Bible say? And you'll always get a word from the Lord. What if I say I won't give you that call? A knuckle sandwich. Times are hard, and pastors are getting angry in Danville. Whether you believe the way I believe or not, I don't care. Videotape me.